Hello everyone and welcome back to Aviation Made Easy, the channel where we simplify aviation concepts so anyone can understand them. In today's video we'll be diving into class echo airspace, one of the most common airspace you'll encounter in the FA National Airspace System. You can think of class echo airspace as being almost everywhere, extending from the surface or a designated altitude all the way up to, but not including, 18,000 feet. But there's more to it. In some areas, class echo starts lower, like 700 feet, or even right at the surface. Why? It's all about protecting the airspace and ensuring safe operation. We'll take a closer look at the sectional chart legend to identify these areas, like the magenta shading and dashed magenta lines, and explain why these exceptions exist. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Now, echo airspace can be one of the trickiest to understand, as it starts at different altitudes depending on the location and the purpose. And of course, there are different types of class echo airspace, which we will look at individually, one by one, throughout the video. So, how do you really know whether it begins at 700 feet or 1,200 feet AGL? The first trick that you can do is look for the thick fuzzy magenta line or circles on the sectional chart. This indicates area where class echo airspace begins at 700 feet AGL, often used to transition IFR traffic in and out of airports. However, if you are outside of those magenta boundaries or no specific altitude is marked on the sectional chart, class echo starts at 1200 feet AGL which is the default for areas not covered by other control airspace. All right, guys, let's make things a little bit more simple. Here we have a typical VFR sectional chart. Now, there's a pretty good chance if you're not flying inside a Delta airspace, a class Bravo, class Alpha, class Charlie, or if you're outside of one of these shaded magenta or dash magenta, you'll be in the in-route domestic area, which is basically everything else apart from these circles that we see here. So anything else outside of these rounded circles, it's going to be the domestic area and it's the first class echo airspace we'll look at. It's the one you're gonna spend the majority of your time flying in. And class echo in these places will begin at 1200 feet AGL. Now we will finally look at these shaded magenta lines. I'm pretty sure you guys are wondering what they're for. These are known as the class echo transition airspace and they exist to provide safe and efficient transition for instrument fly rules or IFR traffic operating between the in route and terminal environment. Here's why it's so important. Firstly, it ensures that the control airspace extends low enough to protect the IFR flights during approaches, departures, or climb out from an airport. It also allows air traffic control to manage IFR aircraft in critical phases of flight when they are closer to the ground to maintain communication for a longer period of time until the pilot can safely identify the airport or have the airport in sight after going uh, descending from some ceilings or bad weather. So class echo transitions start from 700 feet and go all the way up to but not including 18,000 feet. The next class echo airspace we'll look at now is the surface areas depicted by dashed magenta lines on sectional chart. Now these surface areas provide control airspace down to the surface around airports that accommodate IFR operation but lack a control tower. These areas ensure safe transitions from IFR traffic during critical phases of flight, especially approaches while also protecting instrument approaches in poor weather conditions. Constant communication with ATC is maintained with class echo surface areas allowing IFR pilots to receive guidance and separation from other aircraft all the way to the surface or to the ground. Constant communication is kept, so that's pretty assuring. Just to summarize what we have covered so far, anywhere else apart from a shaded or dashed magenta, you're going to have your domestic en route, which starts at 1,200 feet, 
as you go into a transition area you will a class echo airspace will start at 700 feet and eventually when you enter a surface area or the dash magenta it will as the name implies it starts directly from the surface all the way up to but not including 18,000 feet Next, we'll look at class echo extensions depicted by dash magenta line like the surface one on sectional chart. They have a kind of rectangular shape area which are usually connected to class deltas. They are specifically designed to protect the arrival and departure corridors for IFR traffic aligned with a specific runway that have an instrument approach or departure procedure. These extensions ensure once again that controlled airspace covers the critical path used by IFR aircraft and very similar to the surface areas, extensions have the same concept. They start from the surface and extend all the way up to but not including 18,000 feet. In other words, you'll maintain in class echo airspace the whole time. The next echo airspace we'll look at is the offshore airspace depicted by a blue zipper line on sectional charts. Now, this airspace begins at specific altitudes. It's not always going to be the same. In this case, it's 1,300 feet MSL and extends upward to ensure control airspace over international waters or remote areas. The primary objective or purpose of an offshore class ECHO is to provide once again ATC services for IFR traffic operating beyond the domestic airspace boundaries ensuring safe navigation, separations in area without ground-based navigation aids. The next type of class ECHO airspace are Victor Airways, often referred to as the highways in the skies. They are a type of class echo airspace used for low altitude and route navigation by IFR aircraft. They are depicted on sectional charge as a light blue lines and typically extend from 1,200 feet AGL up to but not including 18,000 feet MSL. Now Victor Airways connects VORs which are very high frequency omnidirectional range stations and provide a structured path to follow, ensuring safe and efficient routing between airports. While primarily used by IFR traffic, VFR pilots can also use Victor Airways for navigation. These airways help maintain and organize air traffic flow, especially in areas with dense aviation activity by providing standardized routes and altitudes for en route operation. Usually the width of each Victor Airways is like 8 nautical miles wide, 4 nautical miles on each side of the center line. And once again, the vertical limits, Victor Airways typically extend from 1,200 feet AGL up to 17,999 feet mean sea level, where class echo airspace transition into class alpha. Last but not least, let's talk about two remaining specific type of class echo airspace that exist at higher altitudes. One of them is called the above 14,500 feet MSL and the above flight level 600. So class echo airspace above 14,500 feet MSL begins in areas where no other airspace class is designated, such as over remote or sparsely populated regions. It extends up to but not including 18,000 feet MSL, where class alpha airspace begins. This ensures a control environment for IFR traffic in these areas, even though there may be dense air traffic or nearby navigational facilities. Now above flight level 600, class echo airspace resumes. This high altitude airspace um, accommodates operations like military or research flights and ensures consistent ATC coverage above the structure class alpha airspace um, below it. Essentially, these segments of class echo airspace maintain a seamless flow of air traffic control and ensure safety. Whether you're flying at higher altitudes in remote areas or at extreme altitudes above traditional airspaces. And to summarize everything, I strongly encourage you to remember the acronym SEDVOTA, which covers everything, all the echo airspace we looked at today. 
so guys that's a wrap for today's video um, once again we cover a lot of information about the class echo airspace and the different types with time and practice you'll become much more confident in recognizing and understanding these airspace classifications to help you review i have created a free pdf summarizing all the types of class echo airspace we have discussed today you can find the link in the description below if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future episodes. Thanks for watching and until next time.